Okay, now welcome to this test review. Now, I've already uh, completed some problems, so hopefully you have these down on your paper. But I'll go ahead and go over them and kind of highlight the important parts. Uh, the first question is plot each point given the polar coordinates. Now, when you graph polar, the biggest thing we got to keep in mind that this is R and this is theta. So, in this case, one of the first things I did is that I graphed 2 pi divided by 3. That's step one. Actually, before I get to that uh, step, Remember, you always have to draw this. This is called pull, and then you draw the polar axis. And the reason being is that the polar and the polar axis are kind of like your reference points. They're your initial points. And then from there, you draw your terminal line, which was this one right here, because we drew this angle right there. And the biggest thing that uh, occurred that most people get confused is that if you notice the negative 2, instead of doing two marks in the direction we normally draw when the angle ends, you go two marks in the separate direction so and right there's your point so from here that's how that's how you do the point now to further illustrate how this works r and theta oops hold on before i do that i want to draw my pole and my polar axis pole polar axis now in this case i'm going to go clockwise this direction about uh, because this is negative pi divided by six and then from there one two three four five Here's my point, 100% correct answer. So that's how you draw polar, polar um, points. Now let's go ahead and now start with this one. Now this one right here says uh, the rectangular coordinates of a point are given. Find two pairs of polar each point, one with r greater than zero and the other one with r less than zero. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, if anything, step one when you're working on this is go ahead and graph the point. Uh, this is negative one negative one so your points here the reason why you want to know this this is quadrant three and um, this is very important to do first of all when you're working on taking the tangent of this point uh, it this is where it's critical to know this now after that r is the equation x squared plus y squared you'll find this in your yellow sheet so which means that you have negative one squared plus negative one squared which means you have square root of 2. Now as far as finding the angle, the angle is tangent inverse of y over x. Also find yellow sheet. Now if you use, use your unit circle and the reason being is that when you find negative 1 over negative 1 you're gonna look for the unit that this tangent is in but in quadrant 3. So you're gonna look to see, okay, quadrant 3 what is the tangent inverse of 1? And you'll figure out that it's the angle 5 pi divided by 4. So once you do that and you find out that that's the answer, then you just write down your point. So you'll have here square root of 2, 5 pi divided by 4. Now, this point is roughly this section here. Now, to get to this point, either I could do one or two things. Either I could use this line that the other angle that's formed which is pi divided by 4 and the way I know that is that I subtract pi to get back to this location or you could go ahead and add pi and and I could I'll come up with two answers for you so if I subtract pi um, and apply a negative r value which is the other point that I need the other point is 5 pi divided by 4 you might be wondering well how'd you come up with that um, that's done simply by taking 5 pi divided by 4 and subtracting pi to get a common denominator that's 4 over 4, which leads to pi divided by 4. That's one way, method. Um, the other method is that you could go around the other direction and add pi, which is adding 4 over 4 pi, which means you have 9 fourths pi, which means you go through the unit circle once, but in essence arrive back at this location in itself, but just going over twice. So either case, this one or this one this will be the right answer the ultimate result is you want both points so that to get the full credit and the full answer on this one okay lovely let's go ahead and move on and look for the solution on question four question four we're going to use the same strategy which go ahead and plot the point so let's plot it now some people might be wondering how do you plot uh, 
two square root of three, you kind of guesstimate is really what it is. It's roughly 3.4. The important thing is to realize that this is in quadrant one. Now, word of caution. Um, well, word of caution will come a little bit further. Um, if you're not using a unit circle and using a calculator when you're trying to find the tangent inverse of this angle, um, you may get a wrong answer if you don't add pi. Um, that's the reason why I prefer to use a unit circle. Now, let's go ahead and move on to this. R is going to be defined as a value of x squared plus y squared, which means that R is 2 squared plus 2 cubed squared. Now, let me go ahead and expand this idea. Most people have difficulty understanding that the square distributes to both sides, which means you're left with 4 times 3. You might be wondering how'd you come up with that. If you are wondering that, let me go ahead and slow it down a bit. What I did is 2 squared, 2 there, those cancel. This becomes 4 times 3, which results in answer 12. So in this case, 2 squared is 4 plus 12, r equals the square root of 16, which means 4. So we'll have 4 in this case. Now, as far as finding the angle, the angle is tangent inverse of 2 square root of 3 over 2. So the angle is the tangent inverse of the square root of 3. That means when you look at the unit circle for this one, you'll go ahead and get that. Uh, okay, you'll get that the square root of 3 is actually pi divided by 3. Very good. All right, so uh, one of your points is going to be 4 pi divided by 3. Now, they also want the other angle, so I have the ability to go around this way. So basically, add pi. And then after that, put r as a negative value, because that's the other thing they're looking for. So let me go ahead and just erase some items here. So what I'm going to do is uh, add pi to the angle. So I'm going to take pi divided by 3, add pi, common denominator, which is 3 over 3, which means I'll end up with 4 thirds pi. And all I have to do is apply this as a negative. Because that means I'll get to all this, I'll pretty much end up here. But since it's negative, I have to shoot back to that same direction where my angles originally, or my points originally is. So here's my two points for question four, and I'm done. Now let's move on to question five. Question five asks us to convert this to polar coordinates. Now the only thing I didn't write in here is the equation. Equation is uh, x, or not x, x value. You do want x and y points, but it's actually defined as r cosine theta and r sine theta. In your yellow sheet, it simply is going to say x is equal to r cosine theta, and it's going to say y is equal to r sine theta, which is fine, but in reality, all we're really doing is doing this, applying both equations inside our order pair. So with this one right here, simply all we did is took the r values, substitute them both, took the angles, substituted those, found the unit circle components of them, and then from there, simplify. So we'll do the same thing over here. So, so let me go ahead and get some space. I'm going to erase this. Um, if you're watching this, you can go back and pause it and see the work. Now remember, with everything, please make sure to that you could go ahead and do it. Write it down the problem and do it without looking at the video. And if you do find you still have difficulty, go back and let's see it. And then afterwards, go ahead and find your, your you know, re relearn how to do the answer. And then go back and retry it. you got to be able to do this on your own. Um, it doesn't make any help to just go ahead and watch the video without you trying. And make sure you remember the three things to remember, understand. you got to make sure you can remember it. That's why you're kind of testing yourself. And then you find out, do you understand this? And then add, lastly, and most importantly, applying. Now, the other steps is actually if you could teach it to somebody. After you learn this, if you could go tell your friend how to do it, then you've actually increased your level of learning. 3 cosine 3 pi divided by 2. 3 sine 3 pi divided by 2. 
All right, so if we go ahead and get 3 pi divided by 2, we're going to find out that that angle, the cosine of that, is going to be 0. And at negative 1. And the reason being is because I know 3 pi divided by 2 is roughly this point on the unit circle right here. So, and that point is 0, negative 1. So that's the reason why we get those values. So, which means that this is 0, negative 3 as far as an order pair, a rectangular coordinate. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Now in the next question, one of the things that we did is we asked to go ahead and graph r squared 16. Now the only thing that most people did not do when they were confronted with this is convert this, and the way we did it is by applying the square root. Now remember, when we apply the square root, we got a plus or minus there. So like in this case, you'll have plus or minus 4, and then you'll have R1. Now, it's going to ask you what kind of equation it is. Now, for that, you should have your library and functions. And I want to say this one was a limsicate. Let me write that down. And actually, let me get the... Okay, so let me go ahead and write down limsicate for you. Limsicate is... Let's see, it's written like this. So for question A, identification is lim... This case. And the reason being is that because of the form that it has. Now, when graphing, let me go ahead and pull up my graphing calculator, uh, you need to do a couple of things. First of all, when you grab your calculator, you have to have the stuff memorized because it's not like written anywhere. And what I mean is that you got to be able to first convert to pole. So you got to go to mode. Mine isn't polar, but in essence, and this is what I'm talking about where you see that pole. You see the little hand in. Then after that, you got to go to second table set and then also change this ask. Where, so we see that ask. All right, you see the little hand right there, kind of blinking. That's the other thing you have to do. Now, as far as also, you need to achieve the window, the table set. Uh, the window must be placed in a certain manner. Why? What do I mean? Now, these are going to be default. The ones you must change is this one. It might be, when well, Mr. about you're putting down the exact same values. Yes. Originally, by default, those are. Are at 10. You got to change them from negative 6 on the x and negative 6 on the, and then from there on the y, negative 4 to 4. Now, the reason being is that afterwards I'm going to set up both equations. Now, please look. I put down the equation that came from my limbsicate. Um, all I did is pull out the square root 16 and made it a 4. So you have 4 sine 2 theta and negative 4 sine 2 theta. Now, if you forgot where the theta comes from, look at the x button. The theta is one of the values that's in there. Now, I did both because when you look at the graph, the graph is going to look like this, kind of like two little rose petals. What you must do is go to the table. And what I did is I pulled up a couple of points. Now, which points did I pull up? I pulled up pi divided by 6. Pi divided by 6. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and reset this calculator. The reason why I want to reset it, give an opportunity to do everything I just said, it's actually with you. Change this to pole. Okay, window. See how they're negative 10? Negative 6, positive 6. Uh, so negative 4, positive 4 for the y. And then after that, uh, let's see, we're going to bring up the table set, change this to ask. And then after that, we're going to go y equals, and we're going to go ahead and type in the 4 square root of sine, is this sine? Yes, sine 2 theta. And then after that, we're also going to bring up the negative version of that, negative 4 square root of sine 2 theta. Okay, lovely. So when I hit graph, my two rose petals will appear. But the biggest thing I want to go ahead and impart is that when you look at your unit circle, um, you want to... Pick points that would make sense. Which points would make sense? Like this one, pi divided by 6, pi divided by 4, and pi divided by, oh, 3. So, um, now, one of the things that's going to happen with this is that once I pick these values, the calculator is actually also going to be these values over here. Not, and I think more of anything is because it's, kind of trying to see what shows up in those same angle points 
because it's kind of referencing back this way as far as lines. So since they're identical, it's okay. You can use those points. Um, so let me go ahead and ask you now bring up the table. Ooh, hold on, let me clear all this. Go back to pointing this calculator and bring up the table and bring up those values. So second pi divided by 3. Notice that. I'll show up twice and then uh, second pi divided by 4. And after that, second pi divided by 3. So, oops. Second pi. I must have placed something else in there. So let's fix that. Second pi divided by 3. Ooh, still doing it wrong. Let's go back and fix that. Second pi divided by 3. 3. Go. All right. There you go. So. I have some points. I want to plot those points. 3.72. So really what you're going to do is this. Um, pi, like pi divided by 3 is 3.72. So here's 1, 2, 3. About there. Pi divided by 4 is 4. And the other one's roughly there. So this one's roughly going to do this as far as your graph. And it'll do the same thing on the other side as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There, there. And you have a pretty good little petal. Yes. Okay. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to this one. And this one gives it, this one tells you R is minus uh, 2 sine theta. So the first thing now, one of the things that's going to be neat is that you can use a library of functions on your calculator. So what I would suggest is just go ahead and graph it and see which one does that appear as far as what you have. Now with this one, I'm just going to put in 2 minus 4 sine theta, your graph, and there you go. Okay, so when you look at your library of functions and you try to identify which one it is, it goes ahead and uh, it's probably going to be a limacon with an inner loop. And yes, it is. It's a limacon with an inner loop. So when you talk about identification on this one, Limacon with inner loop. All right, great. Now, apart from that, let's look at the graph and make a better determination. Which means, now, notice this one. Most of the values are going to be down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use values as well that are going to be down there as well. So what does that mean? Like 4 pi divided by 3, 3 pi divided by 2. Um, all the values are below the unit circle in this direction. That's what I want. Let me go ahead and clear this. Pull that out. And now let's go ahead and actually use that to actually um, do this problem. So let's see. Um, let me go back to my, well, I'm trying to get to the, oh, here Seems you're right. Yes. Okay. Now, let's go do the second table set. And I'll well, pause a second. Okay. So we're going to come up with the values of Lima Khan with the inner loop. And the values I'm going to use are going to be five of them. But I'm going to actually going to use um, the ones like 7 pi divided by 6. I'm actually going to use, um, uh, let's see, 5 pi divided by 4. And all these values are at the bottom of the unit circle. I'm going to use 4 pi divided by 3. And I'm also going to use, um, well, I could probably use 3 pi divided by 2. I may get an error just because that one is the, let's see if I get an error. Hang on. Oh, it actually gives me the value. Okay, so then after that, 5 pi divided by 3. Um, 7 pi divided by 4. And just to make it all even, 11 pi divided by 6. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and plot these and, uh, on your paper. Ooh, bring it back up. Okay, so at um, 7 pi divided by 4, which is right here, I have a unit value of 4. And that's actually kind of neat because um, the reason I say so is because... Uh, 
one, two, three, four. We have a whole number there. And the other place we have the whole number is three pi divided by two. So three, four, five, six. And the other place, and actually the pi, the other whole number is going to be here. As far as the lemma called the inner loop, you're probably going to have to guesstimate that inside of it. Because this one is going to look like this. Okay, and actually to make a better graph, you probably should go ahead and estimate. Actually, let me go with, let me back up. I drew that. The reason being is that we want to make sure you draw at least five points before you go ahead and actually start um, graphing anything. So let's see, the next one was 4.86, so this one's going to be about here. The next one was going to be 5.4, so this one's going to be about there. I think I have the right ones as far as the one the unit circle shows. And then the other ones are going to be here and here. So now when I draw my graph, I'll have a nicer looking graph. Now, um, I would say for the right now, the inner loop, go ahead and just uh, draw that in. And it shows that you've described the inner loop. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we have other ones here to graph. Pretty much the same process. So I'm not going to go through them because you're going to use the exact same thing. Now, the only thing you should do, though, before you get into them, before you graph them, is go ahead and make sure that the R and R equals. So this should be R is equal to 3 cosine theta. And this one over here, that one's an R equal, so you're good there. All right, excellent. Actually, I want to say that this other one, this one's going to be a vertical line. So when you get points, you're going to draw it as a, it's going to come out points as a vertical line once you graph that one. And this one over here, this one I think is one of the uh, cardoids. It should. Look at the graph and just, um, well, actually, let me, let me look at the graph and I'll just verify it's a cardoid for you. Uh, let's see, 4 plus. Or cosine theta. Looks like a cardoid. Kind of an, not an unusual one, but a little bit wide in a way. Might be not, may not be a cardoid. Um, you know what? Because it does look like it. Looking, 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 looking. Yeah, you know what? This one is going to be a cardoid. So you can write that in. Make sure I write it right. Four cosine. Yeah, everything's great. All right. So this is going to be the cardoid. So just make sure this is cardoid. This is a vertical line. And then from there, you do the same steps to graph. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. And uh, same things with these, actually. You know what's up? I would think this test actually has a lot to do with the library function. So I would highly suggest you bring that. Make sure you bring that. So you're going to graph these. Make sure you do the five points. Now let's go ahead and actually do this part right here. I do want to get to this part. And the reason being is that um, the other things with the other first two examples, you have a general idea how to do the rest. Now as far as these, it says use the vectors in the figure of the right to complete the following table. And it says add u and w. Now remember with vectors, all you're going to do is draw u, so like this one is uh, 3 up over 2, and then w is down 5 over 1. So, oops, let me not move that. Up 3 over 2, down 5 over 1. Now the reason why that's important is actually, in this case, you could really start with any of them. You start with u, up 3 over 2, so here is my drawing of u. And after that, you can draw W. So one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. So technically, W would be there. Now, you, you normally want to stay inside the corner grid. So what I'm going to do just to make it better is I'm going to go ahead and start a little bit higher. So here, up three over two. That's you. W is, and then you start at the end of the other vector. So when I start W, I'm going to start it from here. Count down five. One, two, three, four, five over 1, and then draw W. The union, the line that gets formed between these two, this line specifically, that's known as U plus W as far as in vectors. And those get added. 
Now let's go ahead and do this one. I like this one because it shows you. Okay, now, you know how this one, this one shows you it wants negative U. Okay. So, first of all, we're going to do two things here. We're going to have, we're going to draw U, but instead of drawing it up 3 over 2, I'm going to do it the other way. So, I'm going to draw down 3 over 2. So, what is this technically? Negative U. I want two of them. So, I'm going to go ahead and draw down 3 over 2 again, starting at the end of the other one. And here you go. Here's negative U. So, now I have two negative U's. This is, in essence, two negative u, that whole line. And then from there, I'm going to draw a negative v. Now, v should have been up to over 4. But since it's negative, I'm going to go down 2 into the... So instead of going up and to the right, I'm going to go down into the left. So I'm going to go down this way and 4 this way. So it's right here, and I'm doing a different color. This goes V now. This is technically negative V because we're subtracting the, the value of it, which makes this roughly positive and negative. So, what does that mean? That means that this line to this line, that's negative 2U plus negative V vectors. And there you go. That's all you need to do. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this. So this is vector V has an initial point P and a terminal point Q in the form ABGI. Now remember, when you deal with these right here, you have to use a formula in order for you to get the answer. Let me go ahead and write down the formula for you. Okay, here's the formula. The formula is just given this. It's going to be V. Okay, remember, we're going to call this, uh, since this is, uh, in the inside your notes, this is labeled as P1. So this is X1, Y1. This is uh, and you notice it says P2, X2, Y2. It's a good thing to keep in mind because your equation is just going to be simply put X2 minus X1, I, and then it's a plus here, Y2 minus Y1, J. So like in this case, all we have to do is substitute 1 minus 3, I, and negative 2 minus 2, J. So this is going to become 2, well, negative 2i plus, so vector V. And this over here is going to become negative 4, J. And that's your answer. Same thing will be applied here. So I'm going to use the equation you see on the left and just go ahead and just do a little bit quicker. So like in this case, my vector V We'll just go ahead and be, well, let me go ahead and do this, x1, x2, I'll y2, x2, huh. well, I just butchered that one, I just, so let me go ahead and fix it, um, it's going to be y1, x2, y2, so let's go ahead and start with the x2, which is 5 minus negative 2, i plus mm, y2, which is 11, minus 1. Okay. So from here, we're going to have 7i. You don't have to have parentheses. I just did that because I just saw it. And j. That's about it. That's your answer. So this is your vector v. And that's all. That's all you do those. Pretty simple to do as far as vectors. Now these, we're going to do the magnitude. Remember, the equation for magnitude when you're dealing with vectors simply just a squared. Remember, every vector is written in the form ai plus bj. Um, give me a second. Okay, great. Now, and the reason why I'm writing down that vector form is because when you write down the actual uh, equation for it, it's going to be just simply to find the magnitude of a vector. It's asking you to look for the unit a squared plus b squared. So like in this case, this is going to be 2 squared minus, well, plus negative 3 squared. Which means that you should, do not trust your calculator. You've got to put this in parentheses. And the reason why I'm noticing, I'm still noticing some people actually not doing that. 
and this is magnitude v. So if you notice that this is it, and that's the reason, the only reason why that's the answer is because you can't simplify it anymore. It's done already. So we're going to do the same thing here. Magnitude of the vector is applying the square root of a squared, negative 3 squared, plus 2 squared, which in this case is going to come out being uh, 9 plus 4. And you're going to realize that I think what they're trying to do to you is realize that both of these have the same magnitude. It might be in different directions. Actually, if you plot them, they'll be in different directions. But in any case, same magnitude. Now, let's go ahead and now do the next one. So question 19. Find each quantity if V and W are this. Now, remember, when you deal with these, they kind of follow the same idea. 5V is just equal to 5 times 4I plus 7J. Now, these vectors kind of follow the same thing of the mathematical rules that we're doing. We can distribute them. So you'll have 12i plus 35j. I'm not sure if the... Um, but it, so that's the easy thing about it, is that each one could be moved and just multiplied in order to create the same thing. So like this is now 5v. Now let's go ahead and figure out what negative 2w is. So negative 2w. Now you do with this of one or two ways, most likely. But what I would say is just do this. Do 2 and then use the subtraction rules to do it. Because you can either take it as plus or negative 2. It's, it's either way, but just don't use it twice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, do 2w. And to do that, then I'm going to do 2 times negative 2i minus 3j. All right, so then after that, I'm going to do negative 4i. And then after that, it's going to be negative 6j. Now, since I didn't use the negative in here, I'm going to subtract both of these. So now remember, the subtraction of these follows the idea that if you're going to subtract them like 5e e minus 2w, that's going to be, well, let me write down the equation for you. The equation, the essence of subtraction is going to just be this. a1 minus a2i plus b1 minus b2j. So if you notice, the addition is still here. What subtraction, when this subtraction does is this. It subtracts the actual components of each one of the x component and all well, the i component and the j components, better put. So like in this case, I'm going to do 20 minus negative 4 i plus, in this case, 7 minus negative 6 j. So like in this case, these signs, opposite signs, become plus 24i plus 13j. Okay, I guess the only word of caution here is that this negative that's originally there, either use it once or use it here. I use it in this case, um, where you see these arrows. But don't use it twice. Do not put a negative here and then redo it over here. All right, now let's go ahead and now move on to question 20. This one, they wants us to find the vector of of the wants to find the magnitude of two addition vectors. So the first thing, say so you add them and then find the magnitude. So like in this case, I'm going to add v and w, v plus w. It's going to be then four plus negative two i plus seven plus negative three j. So that means I'm going to have 2i plus 4j. Let's take the magnitude of that. Magnitude of v plus w then is now going to be 2 squared plus 4 squared. So it's going to be 4 plus 16, which means in this case we'll get the square root of 20. And you're going to simplify this a little bit further. By saying, okay, because remember, you could break up 20 into 4 times 5, and then say this is 2 square root of 5 is your answer. So that's the magnitude of V plus W. All right, great. Let's go ahead and move on. Now, it wants us to find the magnitude quantities of each one. Now, what you're going to do first is you're going to go ahead and find the magnitude of each one. So like in this case, let's go ahead and find the magnitude of 4. Because it's really when you got two magnitudes, you're going to get one, one just single magnitude. So it's not anything terribly complicated here. 
it's just going to be 4 squared plus 7 squared, which means you got 16 plus 49, which means that one of the answers you're going to have the um, 59, 65. Let's see if that could be simplified. Hit uh, 25. No, I think that's it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do the magnitude of W. Magnitude of W is going to be negative 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, which means in this case you're going to go ahead and get 4 plus 9, which means you get the square root of 13. So this you'll have the 65 minus square root of 13. That is your answer. And let me go ahead. Okay, now let's do the other one where now this one is slightly different. You see how it's inside? You're going to subtract the magnitudes first and then come up with the magnitude answer. So, like in this case, we're going to go ahead and use that one equation. Well, let me write. A minus w is going to be in this case then 4 minus negative. Negative 2i plus, uh, let's see, we're going to have 7 minus negative 3j. So we're going to get, as far as the v and w components, we're going to get 2i and positive positive plus 10j. So from here, now we're going to find the magnitude of this. So finding the magnitude of this means we're going to go ahead and apply. 2 squared plus 10 squared, and from here we're going to get uh, 4 plus 100, so we'll get the square root of 104, and I know that that could be simplified. Let's find out what factors does it have. Let's do 104 divided by 4, 26. So. This in itself is going to be then 4 times 26, square root of 4, square root of 26, which means your answer is going to be 2 square root of 26 as far as so the magnitude of V minus W. And there you go. That's your answer. Okay, excellent. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, now this one, they want you to go ahead and find the unit vector with the same direction as V. Now the unit vector is just applying the equation, which is this one, which is simply the equation of V or U. Oh, that moved. Okay, let's get that fixed. Okay, which is really simply this. It's going to be unit vector is V over the magnitude vector, which is simple. That means you find the magnitude of the vector. So like in this case, we'll have negative 5 squared plus 12 squared, 25 plus 144, we'll get 169, which means we get 13. So really the unit vector on this one is going to be then negative 5i over 13 plus 12j over 13. Remember, all we do afterwards, this is just ai plus bj, and you apply the magnitude under each one. So in this one is good. That's not much of a problem. Actually, what made this one easy is that we're now given the square root. If you're given the square root as far as a, a denominator, you have to rationalize it. And I think that's going to be the case for this one. So when I find the unit vector for this, let's find the magnitude of it. I'll get 2 squared plus 3 squared which means I'll get 4 plus 9, which means I get the square root of 13. So my unit vector is going to be 2i over the square root of 13 plus 3j over the square root of 13. Can't leave that. So what I must do is rationalize them. Square root of 13, square root of 13, 2 square root of 13i over 13. And same thing over here, square root of 13, square root of 13. 3 square root of 13 over 13, j. And there's my unit vector. Okay, so just remember, do never leave a square root as far as a denominator. It must always rationalize. 
All right, now let's go ahead and find the, it says right vector in the form A plus BJ, given the magnitude and the angle. Now for that, um, you have an equation, also found in the yellow sheet. Simply put the vector, let me write the equation for you. It's going to be the magnitude, V, and you'll have cosine alpha I plus sine alpha J. Okay, so like in this case, let's go ahead and actually do this one. This is going to be 3 cosine 240 degrees I plus sine 240 degrees J. Okay, so remember this distributes same properties, uh, same properties that we deal with math already. So the lovely part about this is that we'll get 3 times cosine 240 degrees I plus 3 sine 240 degrees J. Now we're going to go ahead and figure out what value that is as far as 240 degrees. Now, in the unit circle, you're going to go ahead and find out that this is going to be negative a half i. And, and over here, this is going to be uh, negative, oh, let me fix that. It's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay. So in the simplification of this, your vector on this one is going to just be negative 3 halves i plus 3 halves negative square root of 3 j. That's it. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the one over here. But let me go ahead and erase some of this. Remember, feel free to go back on the video, pause it, and let's do this one right here. Same idea. The vector is going to be equal to 8 times cosine of 45 degrees I plus sine of 45 degrees J. So in this case, we'll have 8. Now the cosine of 45 degrees, I want to say it's going to be square root of 2 over 2, which it is. So we'll have that, and this will be, oh, one thing I hadn't done yet is distribute. That 8 is going to show up there as well. Sine square root of 2 over 2. J. So, ooh, not sine anymore. Hold on. Let's fix that. Once you write the square root of 2, it takes the place of it. It's no longer that value. The, the sine of 45 degrees, specifically this value, it equals it. So, Let's go ahead and write this down. Now, 8 times 2, this is going to be 4 square root of 2i. And this is going to become 8, this is going to become 4 square root of 2j. And there you go. All right, excellent. All right, now, remember, when you're watching this video, make sure to go back, separate sheet of paper, try each problem, see if you can do it on your own. Remember, you got to make sure to remember, to understand, And lastly, apply. Now, this is the minimum requirements before you take this test. If you could go ahead and create and show other people, you will gain a higher level of understanding. But as far as the minimum, this is what you got to be able to do. That's the reason why I go ahead and highly suggest take out a sheet of paper, rewrite the problem without looking at the video, without looking at your notes. See if you could go ahead and be able to remember understand what you're doing and able to apply it. And if you're able to do those things, you should be great for the test model. All right, thank you.